All right, super excited to have Reed Coverdale here. Reed is a professional truck driver and uh, also a podcaster, which is awesome. And Reed, one of my favorite things about what you do is that you do your interviews in your truck. Okay, let me play this really quick clip at the beginning of your national trucker strike in USA. And, and this is in your truck, right? That is in my truck, yep. Okay, here we go. Um, my... My trip to Oregon got canceled. I got halfway there and then um, they said the load's canceled. So I turned around. Um, I kind of caused a shit storm on Twitter last night and it was completely voluntary. I could have just stayed out of this conversation, but I decided to jump in and say my piece. So obviously the, um, the convoy up in Ottawa uh, is going on. Everyone knows about that at this point. I'm seeing the conversation about what should happen in the United States take place. And so people are maybe being lazy with their language. Um, so I just want to talk about the couple different things that they're saying. Maybe they don't mean to be saying different things. Maybe they're just kind of being clumsy with the language. So some people are calling for a national trucker strike in the United States. And that is fucking retarded. <laughs> and I'll get, I'll get into why in a second. Um, other people are talking about like a convoy going to Washington DC in the United States. I think that's completely different than a national trucker strike. If a convoy of, you know, however many thousand trucks goes to DC and does what they're doing in Ottawa, honking their horns or whatever, like, I don't know, like, cool. I don't, that, that's not the same thing. Like there are people saying that truckers should stop moving goods until the federal mandates are lifted. So I wanted to talk about why I think that's a dumb idea. So, okay. So I want you to explain why it's a dumb idea. But the thing I want to ask you before that is what, was it saying that's a dumb idea on Twitter that everybody freaked out about? What was so controversial about what you were debating on the dumpster fire that is Twitter? Yeah, so <clears throat> a lot of people in the United States are seeing what's going on in Canada. And then the question is, why aren't we doing that here? And then that evolves into truckers, you need to stop moving until our federal government lifts all these restrictions that we have here. So um, they're making a big leap from, you know, however many thousand trucks uh, should go protest in D.C. to truckers need to stop delivering goods until the mandates are lifted, um, because the United States is very different than Canada. Uh, we've got 48 contiguous states here on the mainland, and then you've got Alaska and Hawaii, all very drastically different approaches with the COVID mandates. If you live in rural Idaho, like I've driven through there a lot. You, it looks like 2019. You can't tell that anything has changed. Whereas if you go to Los Angeles, you need a vaccine passport to go out to eat. So later on in the video, I say, if we are going to do some sort of massive strike in the United States to try to initiate some sort of change, I think that it should be very targeted toward areas that are actually you know, enforcing these ridiculous mandates. It should actually be making the people who are, you know, creating these edicts uncomfortable. And I compare it to the Black Lives Matter protests in 2020. I think after George Floyd died, there was a lot of, um, there was a lot of sympathy for their movement because people saw this obvious case of police brutality and people were ready to listen and ready to try to enact some sort of change. Then they started burning buildings down, you know, mom and pop stores, tire shops, Arby's. They started screaming at people in restaurants that they needed to, you know, reject their whiteness or whatever. So they just completely lost the moral high ground. So I think in the United States, since we're not an authoritarian hellhole like Canada, where the, all these edicts have been passed universally from on high without any constitutional, um, you know, review. Uh, I don't think it would be a good idea. I think you could actually weaponize um, the hatred that they would have for truck drivers or people who are against mandates if suddenly 
all the uh, grocery stores start running out of food, the gas stations start running out of gas. So I think, um, I don't know how far you want me to go into describing this or if you want to ask any more questions, but. Uh, yeah, no, I mean, keep going. I'm, I'm interested okay. in that, but I don't, I, I'm just curious, is that, was that controversial because people just don't want to hear why their battle cry could be misdirected or uh, not as fruitful as they might want to believe? Is that what was so controversial when you said that? Yeah, I think a lot of people who are in my circles on Twitter, they're, you know, they're, they're kind of revolutionary almost. Like they just want to see something happen. And um, they're, they're not always completely rational about what the greatest next step would be. So another example I used was actually January 6th. You know, I don't, I, I personally didn't really think that there was anything wrong with what happened on January 6th. I'm not even a Trump supporter. I don't even think the election was stolen, but I think that protesting at Capitol Hill and like when, <clears throat> you know, when there are uh, federal agitators probably placed there that cause the chaos that we saw, that's a whole different deal. But as far as like actually being there and protesting um, and trying to make your voice heard, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. But the optics of that protest were flipped on, uh, flipped on its head so that it made it look like, you know, these were angry domestic extremists who just, you know, were anti, you know, anti um, open free elections or whatever. So they, they just twisted the narrative backward on the January 6th protesters. And then the Black Lives Matter protesters sort of did that to themselves. And I think if you had a like a, a nationwide trucker strike that causes all sorts of panic because the supply lines already very um, you know, it's very unstable from all the supply chain issues that we've been having over the last couple of years. You're not going to see people sympathize with whatever your cause is. Instead, they're going to actually look for security. You know, like when you when you have people scared and uncomfortable, they never, you know, they never turn toward liberty. They never turn toward freedom. They always turn toward who is going to step in and fix this problem for me. So if you have all these truckers who are just like, well, we're not delivering food anymore uh, or gas or essential items or whatever, you'll have uh, the federal government say, look, the problem is all these private companies can make their own decisions and we just need to have more control over the trucking sector and all these selfish people, you know, making these dumb decisions are causing you all this pain. Whereas if it's a much more targeted strike, like if you're saying, you know, I'm not going to take loads in, and, in or out of San Francisco in or out of Los Angeles, in or out of Washington, D.C., um, then you're sending more of a message. You're like, I do not approve of what these areas are doing, and I don't want to patronize them with my business. Um, I think that would send a much clearer message that might, you know, actually get people to realize what you're upset about. Um, so I think that that's my concern is that so many people are just angry and they want to see something happen that they haven't actually thought through the best way to do it. And that's usually when you end up with a January 6th or with the Black Lives Matter protests of 2020. So uh, never act solely on emotion. Always you know, try to step back and think about, OK, what is the most strategic way to do this that will actually get our message across and might actually push things in our favor? Before we get to the rest of this video, this is just a short clip that has basically been sanitized so it can fly under the radar on YouTube. If you wanna see the entire conversation that we had or the entirety of the commentary that you're watching, please go to one of my other platforms. One of the best places to go is allisonmorrow.locals.com where you can become part of my editorial board and pose questions ahead of time for interviews. I also do live editorial board meetings on Saturdays. You can bring your feedback and pose ideas for guests and topics for the week to come. And you get exclusive content so go to alisonmorrow.locals.com, but whatever you do, don't stay here on YouTube. If you want the full truth about what's happening around us, you gotta go somewhere else. So what do you think that would be? What what could that look like in the U.S.? Yeah, so I think um, boycotting and blockading are very different. So I would say if you are an owner operator or a business owner that has a bunch of trucks, and you do not approve of what's going on in any of these cities that are 
administering this medical apartheid, basically, that you should just say, I'm not taking loads in or out of there anymore. Um, and I would say cities, not states, because a lot of people think of, you know, everywhere in Washington or everywhere in Oregon or everywhere in California as being like Los Angeles. But I just brought a piece of equipment to California a few weeks ago. It was out in the middle of the desert. I went to a diner nearby. Nobody was wearing a mask. You know, it's not it's not the same everywhere you go. But I mean, if if there is insanity taking place like there is in New York or San Francisco or L.A. or Washington, D.C. or Chicago, you know, maybe you say, all right, well, we're not taking loads in or out of there until you lift those mandates. Um, and it might be because you're not vaccinated or you could be vaccinated and you just don't approve of those policies that are being pushed on people. Um, I mean, that's going to happen by default in Cal in the entire state of California with owner operators. They're not going to be allowed to go in there at all. And I, I don't know if this law has actually been passed yet, but there's been a law proposed that to uh, drive a truck in California, you either have to be a um, company driver or an independent operator. If you're the in between as an owner operator where you own your truck, but you work for a company, you're not going to be allowed to drive there. They're also working on outlawing diesel trucks, all sorts of things like that. So they're going to end up hurting themselves. It's going to be a voluntary self punishment by keeping these policies in place. Um, I think that's the way to go about it. Like um, instead of like blocking the roads and not letting people in or out, just stop bringing your loads there, make them have to self adjust uh, voluntarily to your demands so that they can still get business. And that's the only time I think you see any positive change. I mean, we've seen with our foreign policy what happens when you place sanctions on countries. That doesn't make them suddenly love you <laughs> and want to overthrow their government. It actually makes them hate you even more and cling tighter to whatever authoritarian government they have in their own countries. So I would say, um, you know, non-compliance, if you live in those places, like just stop following the laws. Uh, just stop wearing a mask if you don't want to, you know, don't sh even if you are vaccinated, don't get a vaccine passport. Just like try to find places where they will let you eat or let you shop without them. And if that doesn't work, then I'd say move, move somewhere else. Uh, protest is fine. Like you could protest in your own city, but I'm not sure that's going to change much. But uh, I, so boycott, move and uh, don't comply. I think those are the best ways that you can undo what's going on here. If you have parked your truck somewhere in protest and you're not driving, you can pass the time by going to allisonwinepromo.com. Again, this is if you have already parked your vehicle and you are not drinking and driving, go to allisonwinepromo.com. You get 50% off of my favorite Malbecs from Argentina. Some are from very high altitudes, one from almost 9,000 feet, another from the oldest vineyard in Argentina. So 50% off the wine itself and 50% off shipping. These are very robust Malbecs and they're different from the last pairings. If you got the last shipment again, Allison with one L wine promo.com, but maybe you're waking up somewhere in your truck and you're deciding, I don't know what I'm going to do today to protest COVID mandates. So in order to get some energy, I want to go to TwinEngineCoffee.com slash Allison, TwinEngineCoffee.com slash Allison. These are high altitude USDA certified organic roasts from Nicaragua. The CEO and owner and uh, founder of the company actually lives there with his family where they grow, harvest, and roast the beans. There is a wide variety of roasts. I am a dark roast drinker, but I also really like the Katura tea they have. This is tea that you make from coffee fruits. I cold brew mine for 24 hours. It is fantastic. So whatever you're driving, once you're parked in a safe spot and you want to check out my sponsors, don't forget, allisonwinepromo.com, twininginecoffee.com slash allison, and toast to free speech wherever you are.